Hey, what's up everybody? It's Jermaine, hope you're having an awesome day. And guys, I'm doing a little bit of a different um, kind of daily update here, because you see you're with me in the car right now. I'm actually on the road um, to go and manage one of our properties. And I just thought it's a really good time for me to just share some thoughts um, with you for today's daily update. So, you know, just thinking about money firstly, interesting um, suggestions are coming out with the easing of um, we've got we've got this kind of stamp duty relief in the UK which has been driving a lot of property market activity and there is some suggestions right now that with the easing of this activity we're actually starting to see a drop-off in um, in in, vo in volume in the housing market so we're, we're seeing the housing market cool down a little bit um, I, I think it could just be really, really misplaced. And I think it's gonna be important for any of us who are investors, um, not to kind of take this too much at face value. And I think it's gonna be important for anybody who's actually looking to buy a home. So just someone who's gonna be say an owner occupier, not to necessarily kind of listen too much to the suggestions that the housing market is calling down. Guys, you know, housing and property works in some very interesting cycles. Not a lot of people necessarily understand it properly, but in terms of the way house prices move, you're looking at kind of fairly long periods of time where you see house price growth, then you kind of get some, some dips, which can again last fairly long periods of time um, before you see some kind of rebound, dip again, and then recovery. But that is a really important dynamic because when you look at say potential house price falls, you've got to kind of really look at that in context. You've got to have a good sense of where you think you are in the cycle. Because you know what, if you think on, on this kind of long cycle, you may be at a point where prices are gonna be going up. Or if you think there are gonna be underlying factors in the economy that could cause prices to kind of stay fairly stable or to be going up, you've got to play that hand you know you've or you've at least got to know if you're going to play that hand versus another hand right you've at least got to know if there are different factors that you can perceive which would make you think prices are going to remain in a certain way now for me personally i remain a property bull i think prices in many 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 jurisdictions um are going to be rising particularly in the uk where we've got a big um land shortage I think we're seeing a big um, issue with foreclosures in in America, but in the UK right now, the market I think is gonna be more resilient than a lot of people give credit to. Um, not least because um, savings balances are also incredibly high. Think about it, during this whole lockdown period, many people haven't been able to um, spend all the money they've been saving. They've just got it sitting there. But one of the big things that we've seen at present is we've seen it's been really expensive to buy stuff. So for people who want to be, say, buying in, um, they may want to go and do things like home improvements or to an extent even when it comes to actually buying property, clearly, it's been very expensive. So we've seen people have got the money, but it's been difficult to spend it. That's a big, big factor just to kind of have your awareness on because we shouldn't just necessarily jump and think that prices are going nowhere. No, 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 quite the opposite. I think it's the case that people may well have the money. Then to another extent, you're gonna have people who are gonna be, um, they're just kind of holding their, their, they're holding their line because there could be factors that impact their, their ability to buy. So a good example is where a lot of people were furloughed and a lot of, or, or they were receiving some kind of um, government assistance they're finding it difficult to sometimes get mortgage offers. So where that happens, obviously people could genuinely have money, but they just can't quite get the offers they need in order to purchase. As long as you see that kind of dynamic, where you've got people who've got high savings balances and they may want to buy, but for whatever reason they're holding off, or you've got people who have got the money, but they may have other factors which are making it a little bit harder for them to buy right now, it means you can get activity. So just think about it, guys. Really think about it quite carefully. There can be activity, so don't just believe everything that you see in the press. There is still money to be made in property, and there's definitely still activity. Um, so the, the next point that I wanna kinda cover 
um, I think really is going to be a, thinking about the kind of career element, the career angle. Um, it's an interesting thing that I've seen with some of the airways where British Airways is actually now going to, uh, sorry, not British Airways, UK Airlines are going to start allowing people um, into the country. I think it's from middle of August if they are, f um, I think if it's they're fully vaccinated. Um, it's, a, it's, a news, it's a news headline that came out today. But the, the, the important thing about it is really what that can mean for the travel industry itself. Because right now we've still obviously got this whole kind of listing process still running. It's all a little bit confusing what's on the red, green, amber list to me, to be honest. What we also see though, is as long as you're stopping people coming in, as long as you're stopping people coming into your country, there's a massive implication on different careers in particularly in the hospitality and service industries, right? So it's really difficult, I guess, if you're working in a hotel, airlines, um, probably a lot of eateries, that kind of thing. Um, if you're working in certain jurisdictions, which are kind of like tourist heavy. So the reopening of borders, I'm not gonna comment on whether I think it's a good or bad idea. I mean, that's really not what we talk about, but I do think it's gonna be interesting career-wise and industry, job industry-wise, what that's gonna mean. I think it's also the case that if you're looking at those kind of industries for your profession, it may be a kind of um, it may be a kind of useful signal um, to think about what it may actually mean. If it's if your profession is and you want to work there, or if your business is in any way dependent upon tourist trade, um, this reopening could obviously be a big. Have, have, it could have a it could have a big impact. Um, the timing is 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 an interesting one because it's quite close to kind of um, the winter months. But, you know, I'm not going to comment on it. I at least think the reopening could be an interesting one, um, career-wise and economically. Um, the, the the next point I really want to cover, guys, I guess then on the um, well-being and mindset um, element that we've seen today is the decision by Simone Biles um, to actually withdraw from the, um, from the US Olympic uh, team or the, the, the team performance. Um, on on the ground of mental health issues. This is one of the, it's probably the only time I can think of in current memory where somebody has actually made a decision to kind of withdraw on men or to, to make a decision on mental health, on a mental health basis, kind of at the moment in time. You know, what you can often find is you'll often find that actually the whole mental health consideration arises later. So it kind of comes up after the fact and then it transpires that somebody was having a mental health challenge. Whereas in this instance, Biles has kind of recognized for herself, had, had, um, had, had, had some mental health concerns, wanted to prioritize her mental health and so decided to withdraw. Guys, one of the most interesting things for me about this is 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 how it's been possible to kind of get any negative press around that decision. You know, I'm not one to kind of judge anybody's situation and certainly that's not what we're going to be looking to do. But what is absolutely clear and should 100% be applauded here is that somebody has taken the decision to look after themselves. You know, guys, a lot of what we talk about and a lot of the, the most important things for our self-care is when we listen to ourselves and when we make those kind of empowered decisions to take care of ourselves, It's something that absolutely nobody has got the right to judge. Um, and and I, I really applaud, personally applaud um, Simone de Bowles' decision to actually make that moment in time decision to withdraw from, um, from the Olympic team. I think that's incredible at, in moment in time. Um, but but crucially for all of us, I think, you know, a lot of sports people, they become trailblazers for culture. And crucially, this is a time where we are seeing the, the character to actually look and say, you know what, I'm not all right right now, and so I'm going to step back. I'd encourage everybody, guys, to, to, to take confidence and encouragement from that type of decision. I think no matter what you may hear and no matter what perceptions there are about you know, did she let the team down? Um, you know, was it selfish? Everybody's going to have their own opinion. And, you know, like it's probably often best not to spend too much time listening to kind of random opinion anyway. But the key thing is, it's always a great shout if you yourself know you're not feeling particularly great to actually take steps to look after yourself. It's never going to be a bad decision. And so guys, that's it from um, that's it from me for today. You know, that's really what I think are some um, really fascinating 
bits of news in the world of money, in the world of careers, and in the world of um, mindset and well-being. Um, as ever, guys, I'm going to link up with you tomorrow um, where we look at some of the interesting happenings across the world. If you're liking this new format where we're trying to give these daily updates, let me know in the comments. i um, really happy to be doing it. And if there's anything that you think we can improve on, uh, give us a shout and we'll definitely look to, look to make those improvements as we go. Um, till tomorrow, guys, have an awesome evening and I'll see you tomorrow. Take care, guys. Bye.